Well, good afternoon, folks. This is Pastor Wendell Thacker here at St. John's United Church of Christ. Actually, I'm in my basement recording room where we uh, did so many of the Revelation uh, videos. We had some issues this morning with, with the video was fine uh, for the service, but the, the audio uh, left something to be desired. Uh, we got reports everyone was hearing a skipping sound or something to that effect. So we think we've got it diagnosed. Uh, I'm shooting this from my phone. We just want to give you a little bit of something. Uh, I obviously can't recreate the whole service with the music and everything like that. But we want to give you God's message for today. And uh, we're, we're, we're speaking just a little bit. Uh, we started a summer series of faith last week. So we just want to continue on with that. This week we're in Colossians chapter 3. And our scripture reading for the day, uh, as Bonnie read it uh, in service today, was uh, Colossians 3. And the key verse was, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which ye are also called in one body, and be ye thankful. Be ye thankful. Uh, what a precious portion of scripture this is. When we talk about experiencing inner peace as part of our uh, Summer of Faith series of messages, uh, there is no peace without Jesus Christ. He is the foundation. He is the crux of uh, everything that uh, gives me hope, that uh, I can put my, my trust in, everything that... Uh, I can ultimately build on. He is that solid foundation. And what an amazing opportunity it is that we have as believers in Jesus Christ to share our faith, our hope, and the truth of the gospel as we understand it with those that uh, cross our paths, those who are in our family, those that we may work with, those that we love and support in many different ways. But it's our responsibility to share the truth of the gospel and the peace that Jesus Christ has given us if you belong to him as a child of God. Uh, the world has a philosophy that they don't need God. I shared the verse of scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. Paraphrased, it goes something like this, that the preaching of the cross, that means the gospel of Jesus Christ, the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness. So the, so the world thinks that we as Christians, because we believe in Jesus and the inner peace that he gives to us, you know, they, they think we're fools. You know, they think we're idiots. They don't believe in what we've received. But because we believed it and received it and experienced and know the peace that he gives, we trust it as God's power unto the salvation that he's promised us. We have his promise that he is who he says he is. And he'll do always what he's promised us he will do. He loves you, he loves me, and he wants us to make a difference for his cause world all around us because he wants to make that difference of giving us that inner peace inside of us. So just to reinforce a few of the things that we said, this third chapter of Colossians is just a phenomenal chapter because it begins in telling us how to live uh, a Christian life and it tells us how to build our Christian character. It tells us in that second verse of chapter 3, how we're to set our affections on things above and not on things of the earth. If we set our affections on things above, that means things that are important to God. The things that are important to God should be important to you and to me. But if we shift our affections and we set our, our, our affections or our goals, our desires on things of this earth, this world, then our life can get get a little bit askew. We need to set our things, our affections on things that are important to God. 
Because if it's important to God, it should be important to us, and he'll direct us in better ways to serve him as we pursue what he wants for us in our lives. And he goes on there when we mention the aspect of Christian character and the inner peace that we can have in Christ when he tells us to uh, mortify, therefore, our bodies. You know, there's certain things that we, we don't need to be doing as believers. And Paul gives us a list there in uh, Colossians 3, 5. You know, you know fornication, uncleanness, uh, uh, inordinate affection, and coveting, coveting uh, idolatry, all of these things. They're not good. And there's, there's a price tag that comes when we tie in with setting our affections on the things of the world, which many of these things are. There's a price tag, and, and he gives us that price tag in verse 6 when he says, for, for these things' sake, when, when you do these bad things, these evil things, uh, the wrath of God comes upon you as children who are in disobedience to God and to his calling in your life. He says, you know, put these things off. Put these things off. And he, and he goes on to give some more just so we know exactly what he's talking about in verse 8 when he says, you know, put these things off. Put, put, off, put off anger. Put off wrath. Put off malice. Put off blasphemy. Put off, you know, filthy communications out of your mouth. Uh, bad speech. Put all these things off in pursuit. You know, he says, you know, don't be lying to yourself and don't be lying to other people. Put on the things that God wants you to, to put on. Set your affections on things that are important to God and will help you grow as a new believer in Christ. Put off that old man and put on the new man is the analogy Paul gives us here in verse 10. And when you put on that new man and renew the knowledge, you'll want to be like the one that has created you, and that is Jesus Christ. We need to make his thoughts our thoughts. And we need to put his thoughts into our actions so that what's important to him is important to us. So, so important that we have the mind of Christ with us. Because you know, it doesn't matter. The Bible uses the phrase, you know, whether you're a, a Greek or a Jew. I mean, if you're not a Jew, uh, in essence, you're a Greek. It's important because we're all children of God. And God has a plan for each one of us. And his will for us is that no one perishes. That all come to a saving knowledge of truth. We can all be free. We can all have that inner peace with God if we'll choose, choose that solid foundation of Jesus Christ. Um, and he goes on here in verse 12 of saying some more things about we as the elect of God, you know, being holy, being beloved, uh, aspects of kindness, humbleness of our minds, meekness, long-suffering. Uh, that word long-suffering is, is oh so important, you know, because mentioned in service this morning, you know, sometimes uh, we can be around people and we'll say, you know, that you know, he or she, is they've gotten on my last nerve, you know. But if we're long-suffering and patient with, uh, you know, people such as that who get on our last nerve, who push us to the point where we just go, to like, you know, something like that, it's important that we be long-suffering and we forbear one another and forgive. A lot of times, you know, people will, uh, will, will wrong us. You've been wronged. I've been wronged. Uh, but the aspect of hanging on to that doesn't do me any good if someone has wronged me. I use the example of, of, of some guys I hang, uh, used to hang out with when I was younger, and one of them did something that uh, really, really rubbed me the wrong way. And I got mad at him about it. And I just, you know, I didn't want to forgive. I just wanted to be mad at him. I just wanted to be upset with him. And I kept that attitude and that heart for, for several months and far too long. And there came a point where I realized that it wasn't bothering him, but I was still carrying it. That's 
why Paul says here, you know, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. I don't know what you might be carrying today, but I know what I was carrying back then. And it was wrong. And it didn't hurt anybody else but me. It didn't hurt anybody else but me. Paul goes on to say, you know, if any man has a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, forgive them. So I had a responsibility to forgive and to forget to the best of my ability and, and, and to follow God's direction in my life as well as each one of us do if we want to claim that inner peace that he has offered to us. He can give that to us. And all of this is bound up in one, one simple word, you know. In verse thir verses, uh, 13 was the one I was reading, 14 is the verse that talks about charity in the King James Bible. It says, above all things, put on charity, which is the word love, which is the bond of perfectness. If we put a dash of this or a dash of that or a pinch of that, I used the analogy this morning of you know, helping my grandmother cook, and she would put a pinch of this and a pinch of that, but everything she did, she did with love, and she baked with love. And if we'll do that with love, things will turn out in a special way and it'll bake in God's perfect, perfect plan of bonding our hearts to what's important for God. Setting our affections upon those things above, as Paul referred to earlier. We get down with that main verse that Bonnie read for us this morning. At verse 15 when he said, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. We made a special point this morning during, during service to say that when we say let the peace of God rule, rule in the context of this sentence here is a verb. It's an action verb. When a king or a queen sits on a throne and rules over, a society as such, a state, uh, in, in an aspect of monarchy, their actions are dictating the lives and the circumstances and the leadership of those that they are, they have jurisdiction over, those that they are ruling over. So when we say, let the peace of God rule in your hearts as we're called into the body of Christ and be ye thankful. I mentioned too today, you know, this when we talk about this aspect of peace in light of this verse 15, you know, peace is more than just a mere word uh, or an idea or, or even a feeling. It, it's so much more than that because peace is actually an awesome, wonderful, amazing gift from God. And he gives it to us through our faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the foundation for any peace that you and I can have as believers in him. If we walk with him obediently, we can know that the, the peace that we have will just take us in the ways that he wants us to go to accomplish things for his honor and glory and for his kingdom. So let this peace of God rule in your hearts and be thankful all things for him and let all let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom as we teach and guide and instruct each other in every aspect and whatever we do in verse 17 scripture says we do in word or deed we do it in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by him so my prayer for you today is that you have this inner peace that God has offered us through Jesus Christ. If not, if you're hearing the sound of my voice, if not, you can have it. You can know. 1 John 5.13 tells us that these things, meaning this book, God's word to us, these things are written that you might know. You don't have to, to wonder. You don't have to doubt. You don't have to hope so. You can know God's peace in your heart and life. 
He wants you to have that. We admit today, if if you've never done it before, and we're not talking about church membership or anything like that, we're talking about a relationship with a risen Savior. Jesus loves you, and he died for you. Won't you admit to him that you're a sinner today? Won't you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on that cross for you personally? He died on that cross for you personally and confess your sins to him, asking for his forgiveness. And the Bible says, in Romans chapter 10, that whosoever, means anybody, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved from their sins. Wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Have you received that inner peace today? Have you received the foundation of that peace? Jesus Christ. Oh, that you would today, my friend. Oh, that you would. If you've got any questions about that, uh, you know, post a comment here on this uh, video after the fact. You know, Pastor, I'd like to know more. I'll, I'll seek you out privately. We'll share God's word with, you, word with you. I'll show you from the Bible, not what you know I think or what the church believes. I'll show you what God's word says. God's word is our stable truth in everything our standard. It's our standard. Do you know him today? Do you have his peace? Thank you. We apologize again for the, uh, for the technical difficulties that we had.